Welcome. All right, projectiles in two dimensions. Suppose we had an object that was projected off the edge of a cliff. This could be a Thelma and Louise. It could be, um, I don't know, a, a skateboarder who's uh, jumping off the type top of a flight of stairs would work. The Simpsons. The physics question ultimately is, how far away from his launching point will he actually land on the ground? Well, we measure that distance from uh, the takeoff point along the ground to the landing point. We discover it's entirely movement in the x direction. And we're ultimately given the velocity in the x direction. We're told he comes off the top of the ramp at some known velocity. Let's make up a number. Let's say velocity in the x direction is 20 meters per second, which is moving right along, but uh, we'll assign something. And we want to know what uh, distance he travels in the x direction. Well, we know that velocity is equal to distance over time. So ultimately to find distance is going to be velocity times time. We have to find out how much time is going to be in the air. Well, why doesn't he stay in the air forever? The question's asked. Why doesn't he just keep going straight? And the answer, of course, is because gravity pulls him downwards in the y direction. So now we've got two problems. One is called an x problem, and that has to do with the distance he travels. And the other is the Y problem, and Y ultimately answers the question, how long will the person be in the air? And so we need the height that he's being uh, launched from, the t how, how high the cliff is, or the building, or the set of stairs, and I don't know, we'll arbitrarily say 9 meters, which is quite a jump. Not something a skateboarder would do and land on a flat. You would end up having to do some uh, other engineering. And let's go ahead and pull a, let's say, uh, Let's say two meters. Two meters is still quite a jump, but I've seen it done. A good flight of stairs, two meters. So the distance is two meters they have to fall. Well, now we deal with the problem in the uh, velocity initial in the y-axis, and his initial velocity in the y-axis is zero. He's not moving downwards at all. All of his velocity is in the x-axis, and so its initial is zero. The acceleration downwards is going to be because of gravity, so it's going to be 9.8 meters per second squared. And he's going to travel a downward distance of 2 meters. Well, we have the equation that says distance is equal to velocity y time plus 1 half gt squared. Its y position is equal to its velocity in the y-axis plus 1 half gt squared. Now, um, I can get rid of this because the velocity in the y is 0. So 0 times time is that. So distance is equal to 1 half gt squared. 2 times distance is equal to gt squared. 2 times distance divided by g is equal to t squared. And the square root of 2 times distance divided by g is equal to the time that they'll be traveling in the air. So if we plug in numbers, we say the square root of 2 times y. y distance is 2 meters, so that would be the square root of 4 divided by 9.8 meters per second squared, 4 meters. And we'll end up with uh, 4 divided by 9.8 is about 0 .408. 0 .408. And the square root of 0 .408 is about 0 .638. So the time it takes to fall that distance it's about 0.638 seconds. So that's how much time it takes to fall that distance. Now let's go back to our original problem. How far in the x-axis will he travel during that period of time? Well, he's traveling at an x velocity of 20 meters per second, and so his horizontal distance will simply be his horizontal velocity times the time in the air. And so the distance will be equal to velocity x, 20 meters per second, times 0.638 seconds. And that range, or that horizontal distance, would be 12.7 uh, meters. 
So it's two completely different problems. The first is dropping the object, letting it fall to the ground, and then during that time it also went horizontally sideways. So that's how you do the problem.